as part of your um, the library provision in supporting what you do as an institution, you also subscribe to EBSCO host research databases as well as EBSCO ebooks. And these are accessible to both um, you, um, the academic staff or you know, uh, staff members as well as the end users because it's sitting within a funder so the students can access it there. And what we're going to do today, I'm going to take you through then how to perform a search or how to use this service optimally. And uh, I'm going to break this session in two parts. I'm going to show you the features and benefits of the research databases and also differently on the ebooks because we have both of these um, resources. And the nice thing is that you only have one EBSCO host and, in, in, and when you are performing a search, you can also just distinguish whether you are looking for a print, or you are looking for uh, electronic books or you are looking for full text articles. In terms of articles then, when you are performing a search, it's likely that there are two ways on how you're going to approach it. One, you have a known item. You know exactly what you are looking for. You have the title, you know who the authors are, or uh, you know from which journal, the issue numbers and everything. That is easier to find. If it's an e-book, e e e e you even have the ISBN number because you can use any of those fields and you'll be able to um, determine the availability of the, the resource that you are looking for. But in most cases, you, are, you have a topic of interest. So that is the approach that I'm going to use today. How then can you have this topic, apply the right limiters or filters to get the, in the information that you are looking for faster? You are an institution of higher learning. There are other things, for instance, with the research, whenever you are performing a research, either for an assignment, for a project, for, 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 re, for any other uh, reason, you need to acknowledge the sources of where you, you of the sources that you've used in your paper. So in, as, in terms of this uh, database as well, we integrate with the export managers or we will also be able to offer the bibliography of the resources that you've used. Again, because you are an institution of higher learning, the research doesn't only happen in the library, it also happens in the classrooms, it also happens on the learning management portal, which is in your case, FUNDA, where you assign reading uh, material for students, for particular, uh, for specific um, modules. So how can you integrate the resources that are from EBSCO uh, databases into FUNDA so that students can know exactly what you want, the books that are recommended books or prescribed books or articles that they need to consult. Then in general, if you're doing, performing as a research, how do you manage your own results? There is something called My EBSCO Host folder, and we do encourage that each and every user of Cornerstone uh, create their own personal account because all of us, our interests are different. We can or even be like both um, lecturers, but we're teaching different things and we may be studying different things. So you are able then to manage your own library within the library uh, databases by creating your own uh, My EBSCO host folder that allows you to be able to manage your own results, to save your own notes, to save your own search history. So it's more like you are managing your own page. Again, going back to our interest being a difference, um, within this database, you are able to also set up notifications for yourself, either for journals uh, that um, are of interest to you or um, topics of interest by creating searches and setting these uh, alerts or notifications whenever then there's new content added because we add content on a daily basis in this platform, this information is sent into your email address. So it's easier to keep abreast on the new articles or topics that are available in your area of speciality. And um, I'm going to close off by showing you the support uh, feed, uh, function, functions and the help site. In terms of the ebooks, you are buying ebooks from us in two formats. One, you are subscribing. The subscription is an annual subscription, and uh, all those books are available in what we call one book, unlimited usage. Everyone within Cornerstone has the same access to the same copy at the same time. And the second part is 
when then from you, uh, from you as an institution, you have identified titles that could be, um, be recommended titles or prescribed uh, titles, and you buy these to, for ownership. And these, you may buy them on unlimited usage, or you may buy them on a single uh, title. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because, for instance, if you are loading a title that is a single title into Funda, it is also important to note how many students are going to use this uh, title because your checkout period, it is uh, 50 eBooks at any given time for any user for seven days. So now the first user may borrow that book for that seven days, that means every, uh, no one within the class have access to it. You don't have a lot of those. I think it's, I, I'm just gonna double check. I think it's one or two titles that are available on one book, one user, but most of your titles are available on either multiple um, licenses or on a one book unlimited usage. But where can you see this for yourself? So I'm going to show you then where you can be able to identify what license model the book that you are, you, you are recommending to your students is available on. And when you're talking about, um, you know, everything that, uh, in, in terms of these databases, we've already identified that your users have remote access because by virtue of being registered students or you being a staff member, uh, when you log into Funda, you use the same credentials like the institution that will give you. And then once you then you are authenticated into Funda, you're able then to just click on you know, the library and EBSCO host, you have access. So you do have remote access. And you can also, in terms of eBooks, um, if it's a recommended book, for instance, students may not need to read it from cover to cover. They need those chapters. A lecturer may say, go and read chapter nine of this book, for instance. So they are able to save, to print, to email portion of these books um, but while still adhering to copyright laws because as librarians, we don't allow people to copy a book from cover to cover. Um, but again, this system itself, it, 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 um, it, it regulates on how many pages or a user can print, email, or, or save at any given time. When I'm doing demonstrations, I'm going to show you where you can be able to see what you can do in each copy. And uh, I already mentioned that you are able to download this offline. I think it's also something that uh, as a library, it's great to uh, promote because if you're looking at the end users as well, like with the students, not everyone has a, a Wi-Fi at home. So you can download it offline, a book of, from cover to cover. That means for the next seven days, you are able to read that book without consuming data. And um, for you to be able to download it, because now you are within my within EBSCO host with the uh, Funda authentication or the uh, authentication of the institution to download a book, to borrow it though, the same principle that uh, happens in the library where you have to produce a library card. Uh, but in this case, because now you are on, like in front of your computer, you need to sign in into my EBSCO folder to identify yourself so that the library can know who has the book and so, and so forth. So those are some of the things that I am going to share with you in this next hour. And I spoke about remote access and um, they can also access these in, the mobile, in, in their mobile devices. And uh, because not everyone, uh, you may be one of the luckiest institutions where everyone has a laptop, but in other areas, not everyone has a laptop. So you may find that then people that are using their smartphones, they can access the same functionalities into the bigger screen as well. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to do a live demonstration. Okay, wonderful. Now, when you log into uh, Funda, you click on EBSCO host, it will take you to a page like this. While I was there, one thing that I've also noticed is that sometimes you may find that not all databases are selected. So just please double check when you log in. If you click on this choose databases, that all these databases are selected. While we're on this page, these are different suits of databases that you're subscribing to. So as you can see, you have um, your business source database, which uh, covers you know, everything that is business related. You have you know, your, your, your psychology databases, you have educational uh, uh, database, 
you have ebooks and uh, psychology and, and, and behavioral science. So it, um, the, these were carefully selected so that they will cover ev everything that you do as an institution. Okay, once you log in on EBSCOhost, this is your basic uh, landing page. On this page, you can uh, type in your title, your author, your, uh, your journal uh, article, uh, your journal title, your ISBN, ISSN, whatever information that you have, or you can do a keyword search, or you can even do an advanced search if you wish to do so. By clicking on advanced search, it, it gives you these multiple tabs and you can add uh, more than one. But remember, the more you add on these tabs, the lesser results that you will pull. You have the Boolean operators that you can also use and you can predefine whether what you have is, are you searching under the ISBN or do you have the title or do you have the author? But even the basic searching, what I'm going to show you now, it is also as good as, uh, 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 um, you know, as it's, it's perfect. On the top right corner, you have this sign in. So like I said, then we encourage you that when you log in, more especially when you know that there are some books that you're going to need, you want to save your search history, there are some uh, notes that you want to create as you go. So it's, it's advisable that you create your own My Esco Host folder. You have two ways on how you can do this. One, you can click on create one now. It will open or a window, um, a page like this where you fill in your details, you give yourself a username, a, a strong password, you accept the consent and you, you, you log in. Then uh, those are, will be your personal uh, My EBSCO host details. Or alternatively, which is easier, you can just use your Gmail um, account and um, this will also authenticate you and it will also give you that uh, off-campus access. If you don't want to go via Funda, you can just go to EBSCO host on the web and it will recognize that you're coming from Cornerstone. Now let's perform a search. Like I said, I am, what I'm going to do now, I am just gonna take you through you know, the, the features and benefits just to show you what other uh, uh, limiters that you can apply to get to the information that you are looking for faster. Let's say I'm looking for information on substance abuse prevention. Okay, you'll notice that uh, once you start typing, it will predict the text uh, based on popular searches. And also what is also nice about this, it also has your um, autocorrect. So it will be able to correct if maybe you're typing something um, incorrectly. So it has all those abilities. Now I am searching for substance abuse uh, prevention. If you notice that my results, I pulled out over 9,000 results. That's a lot of information to go through. If you remember again what I said earlier, we have selected everything that uh, you subscribe to, which is including ebooks as well. So that is why within your results, you also see some ebooks um, as well as some uh, academic articles. Now, if I am certain as a, as a researcher that what I'm looking for now is uh, academic articles. I'm not looking for ebooks at this point. How do I then apply my limiters? On the left side, you'll notice then there's um, this uh, a, a, a column where you can refine your results. One of the first things that are, are frustrating when you're performing a search, you may find that you find an article that when you read the abstract or um, as, you know the summary of that article, it, it has everything that you think that you're looking for, but when you click on it, it doesn't have full text. To ensure that that doesn't happen, this is what you have to do, limit to full text. By doing so, you are telling the database that it should eliminate all the articles where it's only in indexing or abstract only. If you need peer-reviewed articles as well, you can use this feature here. By doing so though, Always remember that the ebooks will be eliminated out of your results because ebooks are not viewed as peer reviewed in this um, uh, uh, resources in this um, platform. Now, when we're talking about uh, you know some of the things that you do, like more socially in psychology, to make an example, you may find that you are doing this search on substance abuse, but you need to profile uh, in this uh, like I'm looking for 
information on substance abuse prevention, but you may need to profile on who exactly you're talking uh, to. Does it have an age group? Does it have a gender? So if maybe your search then um, it, it's relying on those uh, two things, you need to, before you apply any of these limiters, you need to look at the, the gender as well as the age uh, profiles. In this case, if I'm looking at a female, then I can be able to you know, limit my search to female. And these females may also have an uh, age group. I may say maybe it's adolescents or it's older people or you know, whatever age group that is available. When you click on age, it will also give you the breakdown of all the age um, groups that are, that are available in, in, in the database. So in this case, I'm looking at adolescents. Then now I'm able to apply all the other limiters because my uh, search is already focused on a, a, exactly what um, the, the, it has already done the profiling of exactly who am I talking to in terms of the substance abuse uh, prevention. Other limiters that are important here, again, is date. Uh, lecturers may guide student, students to say, don't use content that is older than five years or 10 years, depending on the, you know, the, the subject that they, they're dealing with, or if they're doing a history of something, they might want to start as far back. Uh, so you have this date slider, you can slide on both ways. In my case, I'm starting my search now from 2015 to 2019, and um, the database will update um, my results accordingly. Other fields that are also useful is this one here, the subject headings. So if I'm looking for this information on uh, substance abuse um, prevention for a certain age group, which is adolescents. What um, here it breaks down this um, this uh, keyword to say what exactly do you want to look at. On the left side, you can only do one selection, but if you want to do multiple selection, always click on Show More. And here I can say, okay, I want to do like maybe the impact on a mental disorder. And I can also break down to in specific to say this a substance abuse. I want to focus more on alcohol and drug usage. And um, I can, um, you know, scroll down this list because it breaks down all the related terms. And also, what is the family intervention? You can add as many. Another thing to note, while you are here, these are sorted by hit count, but if you want to view this list in an alphabetical order, you can just click on name and you can browse through this from A to Z. The more you select, the lesser, much focused results that you'll be able to populate into your result list. So that is how that feature works. And some of the um, limiters that are available may be a, a geographic area, a publication or publisher and so on. So I think at this point then, I have highlighted how uh, the limiters uh, work. And if you look now, I started my results with like over like 9,000 results and now I'm only looking at nine results that are focusing on uh, substance abuse and all these limiters that I've uh, selected. If you look then, for instance, at this first result here, it will highlight in bold that this is focusing on you know, substance abuse, there's uh, adolescents, there's a female, so it, it's able to highlight exactly what it's focusing on. If there are no questions, then let's continue. Now, once you have uh, pulled out your results, you have this magnifying glass here. If you hover your mouse on top of this um, tool here, you are able to view the full abstract before you even open this article and you can read and determine whether it's got the content that you need or not. If you like this article, you may just add it into your folder or you may just open the article itself. Uh, but for the purpose of um, this demonstration, because remember I said I want to show you as many features that are available as possible um, so that you can apply some of these in your searches depending on what you need at that particular time. So instead of like opening the full text at this point, I'm going to open the um, detailed uh, record. But before we do that, always be mindful that in terms of EBSCO host, you've got three types of um, full text. One is the PDF, and the second one is HTML. HTML is more interactive. You can listen to it. 
So it's also ideal for people that are visually impaired. It's also ideal for people that are multitasking. They will want to download this into an MP3 uh, um, and you can translate it in other different languages that are available as part of the HTML. So let me open then the, the third one. It will be a link that will say link to full text. So those are the three full texts that are available. The reason why I'm opening the detailed record because I want us to now look at these other tools that you can also use as part of your research. One, uh, you can save this in your personal cloud. Currently, we are su uh, supporting the Google uh, Drive. You can um, save or remove this from your folder that I've saved earlier. You may print, but when you are printing here, you are not printing the full text. To print the full text, you actually need to open it. You may email this to yourself or to other people. And when you are emailing, you can email to people that are even outside of Cornerstone because you can even add the comments, dear so and so. Um, because when you are emailing here, the recipient will receive this uh, uh, PDF uh, or full text in their email body. So they don't need to go via Funda to access the article. And this is instant. Now this is sitting in my email box. You may save into your local um, computer. I spoke about uh, citations earlier. So we support nine different citation formats. You can click on site and all these different formats are available here. And I do know that you, um, with the citations that you are using, each institution you may find that you've got your own different variations. So we put this note here for end users to say, please pay attention and ensure that the citation that you copy, the punctuation is exactly as your lecturer or your institution prescribes. Other than that, if they are using um, a, a, an export manager such as EndNote or Mendeley, they can just export this article into uh, your Mendeley. And all you do is just click on save. There it is on my Mendeley at the bottom there. I can open this and um, be able to use this content. Okay, uh, now another thing that I spoke about, I spoke about that this platform can also be used by academics to link reading materials into their modules in Funda. How can you do that? Instead of downloading this PDF, if this is an article that you want to use in your classroom, all you do is you just click on permalink this is a permanent break, uh, unbreakable link that will always redirect you to this article. And you copy this uh, URL here, this permalink. So never use this one of the browser. Always use the permalink of the article. And you paste it in the web link within Funda. So every time students click on that link, they are redirected to exactly the PDF that you want them to read. So it makes it easier to share and uh, embed the library material into your modules. Okay, now I've opened the PDF. As you can see, this is an article. Uh, it shows how many pages it, it has. Now I can actually download it. I may print it if I wish to do so. Um, you can also read through this article. And all the tools that we spoke about earlier, they're still available here on the uh, right side. So you can still um, add to Funda. You can still export to Mendeley. You can still uh, um, pull out individual citations and so on. I also spoke about HTML. What is the difference? So with the HTML articles, it has this translate functionality. So you can translate with, to any of these languages that's, that are available here. And the translation is instant. And this feature is also nice because as institutions of higher learning, um, you are becoming much more of a global um, a, a, a citizen or village where you may find students that are coming outside of South Africa and they would want to read this in their own native language and they can because now they can translate this in their, um, in their languages. Or you may all even listen to this because it has this um, listen functionality. You've got different accents that you can listen to this to. You may download it, save it in, in the USB or share this file into any compatible device that you can listen to into it. So all those features are available. So that is how then you can apply those limiters and uh, the features and tools that are available to assist you to integrate uh, with your research. 
while we are here, there's also another thing that I mentioned that you can also set up notifications either for journals or, or for searches like this one. If no, you know that this is a topic of your interest or it could be some a research that you are working on. So you don't want every time to log into this platform to search whether there's new um, articles that you can use. So what you can do, you need to be signed in and you click on share. There is an email alert. You can set an alert for yourself, for other people as well, uh, provided that you separate the email addresses with a semicolon. You can choose how, how often do you want to be reminded if there are any new articles. What I advise that you do, always select the detailed record and that's it, you can save this alert. And again, another benefit is that once then, let's say if it was a project that you were working on as, as, a, as, as, a, as a department, once now you've submitted the project is approved, then you can just go to your folders and delete this because now you don't need it anymore. So it makes it easier to manage the information you can delete um, alerts that you don't need, or you may add people in the emailing list as well under the edit button. So other things that I would like to show while we are, when we are here as part of the search as well, let me just go to that substance abuse um, search um, as well. Now, when you are performing a search, please also be mindful that within the database you can do um, um, you can type in any keyword, but if, for instance, you want to um, instruct the database to pull out results where substance abuse appears next to each other like this, because you may find that in some results, it will be something that is talking about abuse, but maybe not closely related to substance. Um, like, for instance, here, it will highlight that it's pulling out information on, on, on substance, but when you read through this, Yes, you have to, you know, sort of find out that they're okay, what sort of uh, substance that it's, it's um, referring to. So what to do is you apply these parentheses. Now you are directing the, the, the system to say, give me only results where substance abuse appears next to each other. And this also may just cut your results by, you know, a, a significant mar margin because it will give you only the... Um, much the, the the much more focused results on what you are looking for so, so those are some of the uh, you know things to be mindful of when you perform research now i also spoke about ebooks your ebooks are also available as part of your search here and if you know the isbn of the book that you are looking for you can just type it in So we can check if this book is, is available here, or you may also uh, type in um, the title, the author, you know, any of those information, it will give you exactly the same result. Alternatively, you can click on more ebooks, ebook collection. By doing so, you are instructing the database then to say, eliminate all the journal articles, only give me ebooks content. And when you view here, what I like about this page is that you are able to view all the different categories these books are available on. For instance, if you're more interested in education, you can just click on that category, engineering and technology, uh, law, psychology, and so on. So you are able to, um, you know, search by, you know, um, the categories that these books are available on. Just as out of interest as well, to show you the, the, the vast or else how um, comprehensive uh, this collection is. Currently, you have you know, over 197,000 uh, titles that are available in this platform. So it's quite a, a huge collection. And again, it covers across everything that you do as an institution. And uh, as part of this, you also have your titles that you've bought, so which will be your prescribed titles or your, your recommended uh, uh, titles for specific modules, as well as the, the subscription. Okay, let me do the search then. I can type in the, the, the title of the book that I'm looking for, or I can 
um, search by um, category. When are the limiters then in terms of uh, the difference between what we have done earlier in terms of ebooks or, or of databases, um, full text articles, and the ebooks is that this limiter here doesn't mean anything in terms of ebooks because all your books are available from cover to cover. But this may have a, a difference because sometimes publishers, when they make these books available in EBSCOhost, they uh, disable the download functionality, you know, that downloading offline. So these books are only available online. They are very small number if they are uh, uh, um, uh, any, or else then the administrators, they may have purchased uh, a book that is a single title. Because now this is a recommended book for a specific module. And if the student check it out offline, they will check it out for seven days. So they treat it as short loan. So that is why this feature here may uh, yield different results, either you know, with the internal decision or from the publishers themselves. You can also still you know, do your date uh, publication as you, as you wish, and also the subject um, that is um, available here. So you can psychology, and then you can break this by you know, those subjects. Remember, what I showed you earlier, it breaks down the keyword into smaller um, you know, subtopics that you can select from. So if I'm looking for books on psychoanalysis, then I can just click there, and I can only view only those six titles that um, um, refer, refer to psychoanalysis. Now, let's talk about ebooks functionalities. You can view this book from the table of contents, and you can open it, this book on the title uh, level as well. Our ebooks are available in two formats it's PDF as well as EPUB, and you can also download it offline. Remember what I also mentioned earlier, you won't be able to borrow this book if you are not signed in. So if you want to borrow it, it's important that you sign in. And I can open any of these books in the cover um, level as well. Now, some of the features that are distinct to ebooks, I spoke about earlier that you can be able to view what license models these books are available on. And the majority of your books are available in what you call one book, unlimited usage. But then if you see a book, for instance, here it will say zero of one, or it will give you a number. It shows that those are a number of licenses that you have for that particular copy. And how many pages you can print, email, or save, um, this is where it will show you. The general rule, is that publishers, they give you at least minimum 10% of the total uh, number of uh, pages within that book, or most of the publishers, then they, they can push it up to 100 pages at, um, at a given time. So a session is when I'm opening this browser. So if I need to download more than what is uh, I'm, I'm permitted here, I close the browser, log into Funda again, and I'm given another 100 pages. But you can do this up to five times because the database will de detect as, a, as someone who's abusing the system if you are overdoing it and it will block you based on the IP address that you are coming from until the following day. Okay, so now I can browse through this book. If I'm interested in, uh, in chapter um, seven of this book, I can click on chapter seven. As you can see now, when you click on the chapter, the, the download functionality of that specific chapter is activated. And because now I'm not viewing this chapter, these are inactive. So if I click on the download, it shows that how many pages this chapter has, and it fits with the 100 pages that I currently have now. So I can download the entire chapter. And the benefit of doing this is I can keep the, this chapter seven as long as I like because it's saved into a PDF format. I, um, I can share with other people as well. All we do at the bottom of the page, we put the stamp of the institution just to show it was downloaded from a cornerstone. So um, you can um, create your own library as you wish uh, by saving the content that you, you, you need. And when you are navigating through this book, 
Um, there's these um, navigators here. I can click to the next page. I can read through, you know, different information and so on. Other things that are available is this search within, which is also nice because if I'm, I'm looking for a specific uh, keyword, for instance, in this case, I'm looking for philosophy, I can just type it in and it will highlight how many times does it appear and does it, is it available in this book? And how many times does it appear? Which page numbers uh, where philosophy appears? So I can just click on those page numbers. And if you see, it's even highlighted in, um, in yellow. So it makes it easier to spot in, uh, uh, the information that you're looking for. You can still save, print, or email. Remember, all of these three features, they're using the same 100 pages. And it will highlight, for instance, if I'm emailing a chapter to someone, the entire chapter, it will highlight how many pages I have remaining. And again, what is also nice is that I can email this entire chapter as a PDF and the recipient do not need to log into Funda because it, they will receive all these 22 pages in a PDF in their email uh, inbox. If you're connected to a printer, you may print. Your citations are still available there. Again, let's talk about that Funda. Um, a lecturer may want to use this book but in this case, they want chapter six um, to link into a, a module or um, a topic that they, will, uh, they want the students to be able to go and read. So in that case, you click on the chapter. It will highlight that this is in page 116, chapter six. If you click then on the permalink, it generates the exact area where the students, when they click on the link, where they'll be redirected. So it makes it easier to share information. And when they click on this, remember they're already on Funda, they're already authenticated, and they'll be able to see exactly the information that the lecturer guides them to read. So that is how, if you notice that in terms of eBooks, I don't need to sign in except when I need to download the book offline. Downloading a book offline, I'm, um, I have seven days, to check this book offline. But one thing that is key is that you're, when you're downloading, you should have Adobe Digital Editions installed in your computer. If you don't have, if you do this for the first time, you just click on this link and it will uh, give you a link where you can download Adobe. They easily just select the, the operating software of your computer and you download it and you do it once. And once you have done that, now this book is available offline. You can read it for the next seven days. You can uh, make notes. You can uh, bookmark. You can highlight. As librarians, if you write in a library book, we are not going to be happy with you. But because this is an electronic book and whatever you do is linked to your personal account or to a session ID, it, it doesn't matter. And the benefit, again, the next time you download this book, all your notes, your um, your bookmarks and everything that you've done, your interactions will synchronize back into the copy that you are downloading at that uh, time. I still have the full table of contents and I can make, you know, I can navigate through this book, make um, the font to be much more favorable to my eyes. I can still click to, you know, different chapters and I can still read through this book. I can highlight as I go. I can copy a portion of the book. I can bookmark the chapters. I can even add notes. And all of these, they're sitting in this middle tab here. You still have the search uh, tab um, to search within the book on the top right corner. And you don't need to return this book, which is another benefit. Uh, after seven days, the system uh, through that uh, Adobe Digital Editions will dictate that then the, your time has elapsed and it will return the book uh, by itself. And uh, what you will see on your computer, it will say uh, expired. If you need this book again, you do have the bibliography. So you can just copy and paste it in, in the live, you know, on, on Funda and access this book again. So those are some of the benefits that are available. So I think then in a nutshell, that was just an overview of uh, one of the tools that you have as part of the institution at any given time you do have this help functionality so if they maybe um, after the end of this session 
the video will be made available. But if then um, there are certain other things, you can also uh, contact Nobile within the library or, um, and she will be able to or, uh, let us know if maybe there's anything that we also need to respond to. But if you click on help, this uh, opens on, on, in the new page and all our frequently asked questions as well as all our um, tutorials, they are available under the help functionality. You are welcome to consult them. I don't know why it's not opening now, but you're all welcome to consult the help function. All the user guides are also available there. You can uh, follow, you can watch videos, you can, uh, you know, there's step-by-step -step guides that you can follow. You can even share, put it in, the, in, in your modules as well for students to be able to access it. So all that information is available. I think at this point, that is where I'm going to end the session if there are no other questions.